Hi all, welcome back to my channel. My name's Ollie and this is Simply Stitchy. A serial number and a plea for help is the inspiration behind today's video. I got a comment on one of my earlier videos, how to date a singer. Not how to take it out on a date, how to work out how old it is. If you haven't seen that one yet, I'll put a link in the description box below. Now, the message was from Mike. Hey Mike. And it read, AL435136. Any idea where and when mine came from? Always up for a challenge. I took a look at the Ismax website and the Singer database. Links in the description box below. Now, I'm not going to go over how I dated Mike's machine in this particular video or rather how I aged the machine. If you want to know how to use the database, check out my other video after watching this one. I'll make sure the link's on the end screen too for you. Anyway, I looked it up. Here's a copy of the entry from the database. And I was like, oh wow. And my reply back to Mike included, looks like you've got yourself a featherweight. But how did I know it was a featherweight just by looking at an entry on a screen? As possibly one of the most expensive vintage singer machi sewing machines, learning the difference between a real featherweight and one that is being passed off as a featherweight is key to making sure that you don't get ripped off. So join me in today's video as I show you the things that you should be watching out for to make sure that the machine you're looking at is a definite featherweight. Camel. The database for Singer on the Ismax website, links in the description, is the original Singer database that they took off their site um, a few years ago now. And it tells you a lot of information. It will give you the year of make, it will give you the number of models made in a particular batch, and it will give you the model number. If we take a closer look at this entry, you see it says 221. That's one of the model numbers that indicate a featherweight. Now, as so often is the case with the internet, you can't always rely on what it is that you're reading or seeing. So just to play it safe and to be absolutely sure, I asked Mike to send through some photos of his machine, which he very generously did, and he has given me permission to use them in this video. Thanks a lot, Mike. Ta-da! There it is. Definitely a featherweight, and I know from looking at it, it's definitely a 221. But how do I know that? I'm going to show you the points that you need to look for so that you can positively ID a featherweight yourself. The first thing that you need to do when you're looking at a vintage machine that you think is a featherweight is check the model number. There have only ever been two Singer models that were cl classed as featherweight machines. The 221, which we've just seen a picture of Mike's, and the 222K, which we'll be covering in a little bit more detail a bit later on in today's video. That's it. Those are the only two Singer models that have ever been called featherweights. I don't care what it says in the description on eBay about the Singer 99 that also happens to be made from aluminium. The 99 isn't a featherweight, and we'll get into the reasons why it isn't a bit later on. There's a couple of differences that you need to be aware of between the 221 and the 222K. The 221 was made in both the US and the UK. It's got, if we take a closer look at Mike's picture here, it's got a solid base and a lift up um, table extension. It's made from aluminium, or at least it is in the UK. In the US it's made from aluminium. The 222K, on the other hand, was exclusive to Kilbarry in Scotland. That was the only place in the entire world where they made 222s. Now, the difference between the 222 and the 221 is down to a couple of features that the 222K had. Um, it was a free arm model, which meant that the table extension actually came off. This is a picture of the 222. You see the lines on the bed? Those indicate where the extension table comes off of the, the actual base of the machine. It's also got a very handy feature called a sew 
stroke darn lever which is it's on the pillar um, that enables you to lower the feed dogs now both of those are functions that the 221 didn't have one of the things that both the 221 and the 222k have in common is the bobbin system they have a unique bobbin system that's theirs alone the only other singer machine that they share the bobbins with is actually the 301 which we'll be covering in a minute now the bobbins that the 221 and the 222k use are fairly similar to class 15s but the 221 bobbin is shorter it's flatter it's a little bit stubbier the one thing that you don't want to try and do on either the 221 or the 222k is try and use a class 15 bobbin because it won't fit and neither will the 66. this is a picture that i found um, which shows a difference between the various different bobbin systems um, and as you can see the 221 bobbin is the the squatty one another thing that both machines in the featherweight range have in common is that they are side loading bobbins which means that the bobbin goes in through the side what you have to do is you have to lift the extension table up and actually access it from the side of the machine now i'll show you why that's different um, to how you access the bobbins on another side loading machine which is in fact the singer 15. this is the singer 15 and you can get to the bobbin on this one through here unlike the 66 this one isn't a top loader it's actually a side loader but it's accessed from the top now if we compare that to the bobbin on a Singer 66 this is the Singer 476 and it's a class 66 machine and the bobbin is a top loader it's right there last but by no means least let's take a look at the bobbin system on the Singer 128 bobbin for the Singer 128 is in here and it's a vibrating shuttle which means its bobbins are completely different because they're bullet shaped now even though they have got a separate bobbin system you can still get bobbins for featherweight machines I'll pop a link in the description box it's an Amazon link I'm an Amazon affiliate and yes I know Amazon isn't everybody's cup of tea for reasons that I'm really not going to get into here but by using the link I get a small referral fee and it helps support me and the channel and it really doesn't cost you any extra other than the price that you're going to pay for the item anyway there's no obligation to use the link it does help me out if you do and I do really appreciate it now the Singer 221 is the oldest of the two models it was actually launched in the 1930s and between then and i think 1969 they made approximately 3.5 million originally you could only get them in black a bit like the model t ford um, but later models came in tan white and a crinkly finish um, popularity waned a little in the 1960s but you could still buy brand new featherweights in the 1970s as companies um, department stores or wherever were slowly winding down on the stock that they had available the 222 on the other hand launched in the mid 1950s so it's a lot younger than the 221 it was only ever available in black and its starting price was 66 pounds Back in the 60s the 222k was probably one of the most expensive sewing machines that was available on the market and this was back at a time when the average wage uh, weekly wage in the UK was six pounds if we put that into perspective and translate it into today's money and allowing for inflation and all that kind of stuff it's easier to see just how big of a difference that really was in today's money the 222k would have been in the region of 1500 pounds and the wages would have been 90 per week so that's a heck of a difference there's a distinct possibility that at one point the 222k was probably the highest priced sewing machine on the planet that coupled with the fact that they only really made around about 110,000 of them is probably one of the reasons why it's quite a rare model 
today. Now there are a few Singer machines that do get regularly confused for Singer, singer featherweights and we're going to take a look at them side by side now so that you can see the difference. Now what we're going to do, we're going to keep a picture of Mike's featherweight 221 up at the top of the screen here and the first machine that we're going to have a look at is the one sitting behind me and that's the Singer 128. Here she is, this is the Singer 128. Now as you can see she does look a little bit different to Mike's um, 221. This is actually a three quarter sized machine which means that although she looks very similar to Grandma she's the more compact version. She was actually designed to be portable but to be quite honest with you goodness me you wouldn't want to carry her very far because she's still made out of cast iron which is one of the things that eliminates her from being a featherweight because she isn't. She's also a vibrating shuttle machine which again the 221 as we've seen earlier isn't. The next machine we're going to look at is the 99. Now this although this particular um, model is made out of aluminium is actually the three quarter size of the 66. Now although it does look a little similar in the fact that it's got the same kind of extension table this one is just a smaller version of the Singer 66. It even takes 66 style bobbins, which the featherweights didn't. This one is um, bigger. Although it, it, it is a portable size and it's a three quarter machine, it's still bigger than a featherweight. The next machine that we're going to be taking a look at is one that's often described as being the featherweight's big sister. This is the Singer 301 and although it is also made out of aluminium it has a similar style extension table albeit being a bit shorter than it is on the featherweights it even takes the same bobbins as the 221 and the 222k but because it's a full-sized machine it's actually disqualified from being a featherweight. Now that we've looked at a few machines that are often confused with featherweights Let's take a look at why it is that featherweights are so popular and why everybody um, seems to want one. Well the first reason is they are incredibly portable. The fact that they're made out of aluminium is one of the reasons why there's no weight in them and that's where they get their name featherweight from. They're also incredibly cute. Everything is so sweet and tiny on them. They're, they're adorable, they really are. But they do come with a few disadvantages as well. One of the main disadvantages is the fact that they are so small. They don't have much of a distance between the, um, the needle and the pillar which kind of restricts the size of the projects that you can do with them. They only do a straight stitch as well um, and because they are incredibly lightweight they're not really heavy enough or sturdy enough to, to cope with being dwarfed by a huge bed sized quilt. Um, so the, the projects that you can actually do on a featherweight are limited. I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm just saying it's not as easy as it would be on a bigger machine. Obviously the biggest disadvantage with either of the Singer featherweights, the 221 or the 222k, they are incredibly pricey to buy. And that's one of the reasons why it's important to make sure that you know that you are definitely getting a genuine featherweight machine. If we take a look at Mike's pictures um, in some detail now, notice the size. As I've said before, the featherweights are incredibly small. Smaller even than... the three-quarter sized machines like this 128. They're also a lot lighter. The absolute best way to tell if you are looking at a genuine featherweight is to actually go out and have a look at it. If you can see one up close and personal and actually lift it up, you'll find the featherweight you can lift up with one hand. The next thing that you need to watch out for is how you get to the bobbin. To be a genuine featherweight, you need to lift the extension table up and access the bobbin from underneath. The next thing you need to look out for is the position of the motor. On the featherweight you'll find that the motor is at the back sitting neatly at the bottom of the pillar 
The next thing is the light. Now, If we take a look at the light on this Singer 15 for a minute, you'll see that it's quite large and you'll also notice that it is on the back of the machine. I need to get a lighter hobby. On the featherweight, the light is on the front of the machine and it is incredibly dinky. It is really small and it is super cute. The next thing that you need to look for is somewhere on that machine it should either say 221 or 222 K. Now the usual place that you will find the model number is here. It'll be at the base of the pillar or somewhere across here. If it doesn't say it there, make sure that whoever's selling you the machine lets you know what the serial number is. Now to find the serial number for a single featherweight you have to turn the machine upside down because it's usually on the base. Run the serial number through the Usmax database and it should tell you what the model number is for the machine. If it doesn't say 221 or 222K anywhere on the machine or the serial number doesn't indicate that it's a 221 or a 222K, it's not featherweight. Now you'll probably find that it's a lot easier to find a 221 because 222Ks are a little bit like looking for hen's teeth. But you can still find both of them if you look hard enough. The 221 is readily available and you can find them in their original finish or you can find them um, repainted in snazzy modern paint jobs and fluorescent psychedelic colours. At the end of the day though, these machines are still only straight stitch and even the fact that they're low shank machines gives you the ability to add modern feet. You're still going to be a little bit restricted to what you can actually do with them. When you compare that to the price that you're going to have to pay to actually get a Singer Featherweight. Now I don't do exact valuations of sewing machines as there are a little too many variables to be able to get it spot on. But if you take into consideration your location, the rarity of the machine, the condition, the age and the accessories that come with it and it, obviously it's general condition. You can kind of come up with a ballpark figure of what you can expect that it would be um, valued at. For a Singer Featherweight, as I mentioned to Mike when he got in touch, you're looking at somewhere between $300 and $700. But you do have to beware the price gouging syndrome. I've seen, particularly in today's economic climate where everything seems to be in short supply, Singer 221s have been listed at going for closer to $1,000 in not very good condition with bits missing so you really do have to be careful out there and make sure you go out and see these things in person so that you can make sure what you really are getting. Having said that, because of the rarity a 222k is going to cost a lot more than a 221. Uh, <laughs> your potential starting price for something that's not quite in mint condition is going to be 500 to 600 dollars with a mint machine being closer to a thousand or twelve hundred dollars and that really does depend on where you are and just how rare that machine's going to be. Everybody wants 222k because they have better features. The repainted featherweights, the refurbished featherweights um, that can be available from places online. I'll put a link to the featherweight shop in the description box so you can nip over and have a look at their machines. They've got some models listed from anywhere between two and six grand. Granted, one of them, it's actually sold out, but it's gold-plated. <laughs> for that price, it needs to be. Personally, for what they are, I think the Singer Featherweights original or um, in a repainted paint job are priced a little bit high. Um, they're cute and I love them and they have a beautiful stitch. But to be honest, you'll get the same quality of stitches on a Singer 301 or even a Singer 99 and you won't pay the same kind of money for them. You'll get the quality of stitches for a better price. You'll also get a lot more sewing space which is an added bonus because both the 301 and 99 are bigger machines. If you're in the market for a Singer Featherweight I hope these tips have helped you work out what it is that you're supposed to be looking for to make sure that you do get a genuine 
um, article and you don't get fobbed off with a 301 or a 99. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And why not check out some of my other videos that are coming up in the links here. Yeah, any minute now. I'm going to put a link to how to date your vintage singer as one of those links. So you can go and check that one out when you finish watching this video. I'll also put links in the description box for you and as, as well as the links to other videos I'll put the links to all the research so that you can go and check out what I found out for yourselves. And I put credits for the pictures in there as well. Thanks again to Mike for letting me use his pictures. It really is appreciated. Thank you ever so much. Whatever video you go and check out next, I hope to see you back here for the next one. In the meantime, whatever you're sewing, whatever you're sewing it with, embrace your creativity and have fun. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.